everyone. Welcome to the Dealey's book series. I'm Christina K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. And, uh, how's everybody doing today? Please take the chance to like and subscribe the channel. I need all the likes and subscribes I can get. I'm not doing very well. Seven months on the road and you see how I'm doing. But anyways, um, did Ida Bell say yes? Um, does Gertie go on a, get in a car with an absolute complete stranger? Um, are you ready for the turkey run? Okay. Today, we were talking about Cajun Fried Felony with Jana De Leon. It's the fortune of book 15 in the Fortune Mysteries. Um, I consider this part two of the Fortune Mystery. Put our little turkey up there. Um, the first part of the Fortune Mystery was Fortune hiding out in Sinful because there was an arms dealer on her head. Those were the first 11 books, starting with book 12 and moving forward. That whole situation has been taken care of. You can read those books and see my previous videos on those. <laughs> and we start book 12 with uh, Fortune's identity being revealed to everybody. And um, they've started an investigation. So let me just go on with this. Fortune is a former CIA person who was hiding out in Sinville, like I said. And um, so that has been taken care of. Merlin is her cat. Ida Bell is leader of the Sinful La Society Ladies. Um, she's also referred to as the Geritol Mafia. Um, to qualify for membership in the, the Sinful Ladies, the husband has to be dead for at least 20 years to get them out of the silly man thinking. Gertie Herbert is her best friend. Ida Bell and Gertie also make the Sinful Cough Syrup a.k.a. Moonshine. Carter is the deputy sheriff, and he's also Fortune's love interest. Walter is Carter's uncle, and he's also Ida Bell's love interest, and he does propose in this book, but you'll have to read it to find out what happens. Did Ida Bell say no once again? Emmeline is Carter's mother, and she's also dating Carlos, a used car salesman, and nobody likes him because they have yet to get to know him. Sorry. Um, so Robert E. Lee is the sheriff who everybody thinks should retire. He's probably pushing 100. He rides around on his horse all day. Celia Avenue is the enemy and president of God's Wife. Their main mission is to get the sinful ladies. Celia hates everybody, just hates everybody. Allie is Celia's niece. Patrice Polson is in the God's Wives, but she is Ida Bell's informant. Francine is owner of the local diner and maker of the famous banana pudding. Whiskey is owner of the Swamp Bar. Myrtle Turbo is the night dispatcher, and she is cousins to the mayor, Marie Chiffron. Big and Little and Manny are potentially loan sharks, also own a storage facility and may have other potential unknown government ties. Lionel J. Franklin is her neighbor. He's gay and he's a cross-dresser and he's a lot of fun. Um, Deputy Bureau is the naive partner to Carter, sort of, kind of. Gavin is the newly hired deputy in training. So, to get this started... There's the onion. I don't know why it's Cajun fried felony. When, well, I guess because it's in the bayou and all that. But um, this is the day before, or the couple days before Thanksgiving. And we have the annual turkey run. This is a seasonal event. It happens every year. And uh, against better judgment, Against better judgment of Fortune and Ida Bell and everybody else who knows better, Gertie enters every year. So it's a bunch of 5 to 15-year-olds, 
maybe a little older, and Gertie. So. <sighs> Realizing the turkey was getting away, Gertie managed to get on her hands and knees and started crawling toward it. Gertie and the turkey swaying like two drunks. The wheel was starting to slow, so both picked up speed as they approached the edge. Gertie reached out with one hand, ready to snag the bird when another kid gave the wheel a whirl. It's a Ferris wheel. Gertie and the turkey flew off the side of the merry-go-round and crashed into the dirt. The bird immediately righted itself and started off away from Gertie, weaving as it went. Gertie managed to get on her feet and staggered after it, both of them moving like extras from a zombie movie. She made it three steps before tripping and falling onto the bird. I heard a squawk and cringe, then let out a sigh of relief when Gertie rolled over, clutching the struggling turkey. Ida Bell looked over at me and laughed. You know that turkey's fate is the same one way or another. Yeah, but being tortured on a piece of playground equipment, then crushed by a spin-drunk contestant, doesn't mean a very dignified passing. Nothing about this is dignified, but I get your point. If she gets that bird in a cage, she'll finally be one of the winners. Maybe she'll give it up then. Ha! Not if we have another gift card up for grabs. She, she'd rise from the dead for a shot at free fishing tackle. Sort of looks like she just did, I said, and pointed at Gertie as she stumbled across the playground, crutching the angry bird. You think she's going to make it to the cage? I wouldn't put money on it. I started cheering, hoping my yelling would give Gertie additional strength or balance, and Ida Bell and the crowd took up the cry with me. Everyone was laughing and cheering and having a great time watching Gertie wrangle the turkey. Except Celia. Satan's right-hand woman stood at the fence line in front of the cage, glaring at Gertie as she stumbled her direction. Gertie looked up as the cheering started and grinned, and that's when things went the way things with Gertie tend to go. All the way south. She stumbled on a patch of uneven ground and lunged forward. She was, far, was too far off balance to keep herself from falling. So she did what most people do when they're about to crash into the ground, throw her arms forward to break their fall. The bird took advantage of the lift-off boost and flapped its wings, determined to get away from the crazy woman who almost killed it on a playground equipment. But with its limited flying capabilities and still in recovery from its bout on the merry-go-round, its flight path was as sketchy as Gertie's walking had been. The extra boost from Gertie flinging it had allowed the bird to get decent lift off and distance, and it headed straight for the fence. It clipped the top of the metal fencing and pushed off again, but without Gertie's thrust behind it, it couldn't gain the same height as before. I was so focused on the bird that I hadn't looked ahead, but a blood-curdling scream had my gaze shifting right. Just as the bird flew directly into Celia's face, Celia, as usual, was wearing a ridiculously huge hat with flowers on, which had probably prompted the panicked turkey to think she was shrubbery. The scream let the bird know it was grossly miscalculated. It scrambled on her head in a tangle of straw hat, fake flowers, and hair as Celia whirled around in a circle trying to get the bird off her head. I glanced over at Ida Bell, who was still filming. This is getting good, she said, answering my unmasked question of whether or not we should attempt to help. I looked around and realized <laughs> everyone with a cell phone had it, tra had it trained on the turkey fiasco. Carter, Sheriff Lee, Walter, and even Pastor Don were in on the action. Gertie scrambled up and yelled at Celia to stop assaulting her bird, then ran for the hurricane fence and started to climb over it. She ascent was wobbly, but she managed to get to the top rail and then sort of slid off the other side onto the ground. But a little bruising wasn't stopping Gertie on her quest to nab the turkey. 
The crowd parted, and she pushed herself up and half jogged, half staggered towards Celia, just as the turkey managed to get itself free from her hair and leaped off her head with one of its feet shoved clean through the, <laughs> the straw hat. Between the merry-go-round Gertie's cap to the fight on Celia's head and the hat, the turkey was so panicked it had no idea what to do anymore. It attempted flight, but the hat seemed to prevent liftoff, so it resorted to running. The leg with the hat on flung out a bit on the side, which sent it off at an angle. Celia yelled at the turkey about her hat, then took off after it. Gertie was hot on her trail and seemed to be maintaining semi-straight line. The turkey took off straight toward a section of the playground that was under construction. I've been told the half court for basketball was completed earlier that year and had been a success that they were now working on Sand Valley, Sand Valley Ball Park. A ball, small bulldozer sat nearby ready to clear the ground next week while the kids were on holiday. Gertie inched up to Celia and neither stumbled or pulled a hockey check on her. Either way, Celia came out the loser. She flew up to the right and tackled some guy filming the all of it, and they both fell into a hedge. I could hear her screaming as she went. Probably people in Alaska could hear her, or maybe it was the guy. <laughs> they couldn't be sure. The turkey was oblivious to the shrubbery crisis behind it and continued its mad dash for freedom. Gertie closed in on it as it reached the construction area. The bird must have sensed that it was in the crosshairs again because it got close to the bulldozer. It turned on... The afterburners then gave flight one more chance. This time, the bird had dislodged from the turkey's foot as the bird took off, and it hit Gertie in the face. She <laughs> whirled around in a circle, clutching the hat, and finally managed to fling it behind him. Where it caught Celia just as she staggered out of the shrub. She must have disoriented by the fall because she threw her hands up in front of her and batted the hat away, yelling for someone to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed she thought the turkey was coming for her again. Unfortunately, this <laughs> unfortunately this was sinful. So a guy who'd been standing near to, <laughs> near to the shrub when Celia made her entrance pulled out himself and blasted a hole in the hat. <laughs> Sending Celia screaming backward again into the bush. From the shrub, I heard a feeble cry for help that was definitely male. I glanced in the shrub as I hurried past and saw the guy who had been filming flat on the ground and an angry Celia on top of him. Assault, he yelled out. You wish, Celia yelled. I was sure that about this time, film guy was by. Regretting living in sinful, much less coming to the turkey run. But I couldn't stop to rescue him. I had to catch up with Gertie before things went to that whole other level that things often did where she was concerned. Besides, I wanted to see how it ended. The turkey had managed to reach the cab of the bulldozer, and Gertie scrambled up after it. The bird hopped onto the driver's seat and was preparing to exit the cab when Gertie made a huge lunge for it. Just as she was about to latch on its foot, the turkey made a leap down and disappeared on the other side of the bluff. Dozer. Gertie fell onto the driver's seat and then slid off onto the metal flatboard and then the dozer started to move. It was sitting up on a tiny incline and dislodging the brink was all it took to send the heavy machinery down the slope. Everybody started yelling and several of the men sprinted the dozer away. Popped up and scrambled to get upright and grab the brake, but she couldn't reach it in time. The dozer slammed into the basketball goal, pushing the entire thing over and bringing up a huge hunk of the court with it. You moron, Celia yelled as she pulled leaves out of her hat. I want her arrested for the destruction of taxpayer property and my hat. Your hat is ugly, Idabel said, and the court is insured. Well, you'll have to read it, but the discovery under the basketball court is a body. And uh, Gertie 
but a green wing macaw who talks. He has three former owners, some mobsters, a priest, or some nuns. And he says some very colorful stuff. It's very funny. He cracks up. He's got a spotlight in one of the next books. Walter has asked Ida Bell to marry him. Um, Whiskey is a, a prime suspect in the murder of the individual under the basketball court. He hires a fortune to prove his innocence or not. Um, there's a new daytime dispatcher or deputy in training, Gavin. Uh, pers uh, I, won't, I don't want to give the rest of it away, but you have to read the book to find out who was whose body was found under the basketball court and how Celia, Idabel, and Gertie investigate. And they actually do a pretty good job of working with Carter, too, giving him some insight now that Fortune is legally a PI. She can do stuff. It's a really good book. And uh, please hit the like and subscribe and let me know I'm doing a good job. I just read books, talk books. I have nothing fancy going on. Um, I could use all the support I can get. So please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you.